I've got three words for you. Sonic the Hedgehog. And Knuckles. Sonic has kind of a weird reputation in the gaming community. What was once the crown jewel of Sega has now been relegated to... Well, it's crown jewel. I mean, that never really changed, did it? And you know why it never really did? Because Sonic's not really that bad. Those of you who follow my channel might be aware that I kinda love Sonic the Hedgehog. My very first video game ever was Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis. Since then, I have followed the character almost everywhere. We're talking about the Sega Game Gear, the days when he was on the Sega Dreamcast, multi-platform days, the Nintendo exclusivity days, the days after that, and we're talking about nowadays. Heck, I mean, I even use Sonic the Hedgehog's sound effect on all my videos. That's how they end, on the sound of Sonic dying. I have earned platinum trophies for almost every Sonic the Hedgehog game, even Sonic Forces, and have more Sonic collectibles than there are grains of sand in the sky, or stars in the ocean, or however the metaphor works. I don't know. I think it's safe to say that I'm a fan, but I also understand that there are a lot of people out there who just aren't, to put it nicely. Now, before we get too deep into things, just remember that when I'm talking about Sonic games, I'm talking about mainline Sonic titles and not the crazy obscure shit that's come out with Sonic's name slapped on it somewhere. So when I mention the Genesis era, for example, I'm talking about Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles, but not like Sonic Spinball or Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which are both cool, but you know. Sega spent so much time in the 90s competing with Mario and Nintendo that people can't help but maintain a rivalry that should have ended a long time ago. And they definitely need to lay off Sonic and let him do his own thing. Sonic has some undeniably good games. To those of you too young to have played the originals on the Genesis, they're still extremely replayable today on new consoles because the gameplay holds up. And you know what, that's an important word, replayable. I'll come back to that shortly. There are good games that people overlook for all kinds of reasons, a lot of it has to do with three main things. Reputation, reviewers, and most of all, time. All three of those kind of blend together. Let's try to focus on reputation for a sec. As far as reputation goes, Sonic has one. To those of us who lived through Sonic from the start, the hate was kind of a gradual thing. As a kid growing up with the Genesis, we played a lot of bad games back then. And I'm not talking about mediocre games that were just kind of shitty. I'm talking about those shitty games that were like shitty for the sake of being shitty. And you know what? Back then, Sonic the Hedgehog was never one of those games. You'd go play Sonic to wash the taste of those shitty games out of your mouth. Weird analogy, but it kind of fits. So, Sonic had a great reputation on the Genesis. Well, let's talk about the other consoles. And just for a second, I'm gonna pretend the Saturn didn't exist because nobody cares about the Saturn and all my homies hated the Saturn. The Dreamcast days were great to Sonic as well. He made a pretty successful jump to 3D with Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. You know what this all adds up to? An awesome reputation. You pick up a Sonic game and you expect awesomeness. But it's not just that. You pick up a Sega console and you expect that awesomeness. But here's a big problem, because once Dreamcast goes belly up, and Sonic makes the jump over to multi-platform, you start to see some problems. That reputation is no longer as awesome as it used to be. I mean, to be completely honest, I love Sonic, but I gotta say, he just really wasn't good at the whole multi-platform thing. And to this day, it's still a mixed bag. You know what? You know who doesn't have this problem? Italian plumbers. Um, but we're not comparing him to any Italian plumbers, don't worry about that. I even criticize people who do that, but anyways. Sonic's multi-platform problems really culminated in the absolutely horribly developed Sonic the Hedgehog from 2006, also known as Sonic 06, and it is really hard to get away from that game to this day. But you know what, um, when Sonic goes, he goes hard, because uh, he made a bad game, and that is considered one of the worst games of all time. He's putting up like, Kobe numbers of bad with that game. And yeah, at this point I should just say, I know I'm talking as if Sonic is making the games, and I'm saying Sonic made this and Sonic made that. I know it's Sonic Team that makes the games. I don't like I don't think I don't think Sonic is a real living thing. I'm just, you know, whatever, man. Whatever. Just just he's whatever, man. Okay. All right. 
So, uh, talking about the humans that made the game, Sonic Team, they made an objectively poorly developed game. That's what happened. It was ambitious for sure, they wanted to do a lot of cool things, but it had no polish, it had no attention to detail, and these things can be blamed probably a little bit on, you know, tight deadlines that are compounded by the fact that they have to go multi-platform. That's a problem. But as far as reputation goes, it sometimes doesn't really matter why it happened. It did happen. And doing that even once will have your audience raising pitchforks in no time. If you don't believe me, just ask uh, Devil May Cry, Dead Space, or Resident Evil how missteps can affect the franchise. Um, just a side note, uh, normally I'd show you footage of those three games, but I stopped playing them once they burned me with DMC, Dead Space 3, and Resident Evil 6. So, I hate them now and can't forgive them. Um, just a quick side note on the side note. Uh, I was just kidding. <laughs> uh, I never actually played those games. So, that's why I have no footage. So, here's some pictures of cats. <clears throat> okay, back on script. But then there are times when missteps are blown way out of proportion. Case in point, game reviewers. Game reviewers are quite possibly the absolute worst source of information in the video game industry. It's definitely a fun pastime of many people in the video game industry to use Sonic as a punching bag. The main reason is because so many of them aren't independent. They say and do what makes money. They feed off a controversy. A game reviewer that's an employee is definitely not your friend. And I'm sure based on what I just said, it sounds like I'm pretty butthurt about Sonic being criticized. I'm not. I'm not butthurt by any Sonic insults, and I'm definitely not trying to demand that people recognize the genius of Sonic the Hedgehog here. What I am trying to say is that you can like Sonic games for what they are, but I'm not trying to say that they're mediocre, B-grade games either. What I am trying to say is they can be really great, but I'm not trying to say that they're all masterpieces either. What I am trying to say that- Okay, I got stuck in a loop there. Alright, let me start over. Professional game reviewers are by their very nature low on time. A game reviewer wants to push out a review as fast as they can, for as many clicks as they can, for as much money as they can. Otherwise, honestly, why review the game? I mean, a game reviewer isn't going to take the time to S-rank levels in Sonic Generations. They're not spending their time collecting red rings in Sonic Colors, and they absolutely won't spend any time getting 100% completion of a game if they want that review being posted on release date. And I know what you're probably saying. Yeah, some reviewers do put in effort, and they try to play through a game in its entirety, but that's the exception, not the rule. Not a lot of reviewers will replay a game before they pass judgment. Oh, and remember I said a while ago to remember the word replayable because it's going to come up later? Well, it's coming up now. The key to any Sonic game is replayability. Sonic the Hedgehog games are extremely replayable because in most cases you always have a reason to explore. The main problem is that you gotta go fast and most people don't have the patience to learn Sonic game mechanics. I gotta say, I am 100% guilty of that myself. And if that sounds like you, I mean, not to worry. I'm sure there are plenty of people that suck at Sonic games. And when you haven't mastered the game's mechanics, it probably just feels like a really bad, uh, really fast, horribly dog shit, Dark Souls type game where every road runs into nothingness and you fall to your certain death every single time. But forget all that. I was talking about replayability. Why don't we look at Sonic Generations, for example? If I want to collect all of the red rings in the Sky Fortress Zone as classic Sonic, it's going to take me three trips through the level at minimum to collect every red ring. Are the paths straightforward? Not really. They're challenging like most of the main levels and like most of the bonus levels scattered throughout the hub world. I could be wrong, but I doubt that a reviewer is going to take the time to appreciate the depth in a Sonic the Hedgehog level. And anyone who's played a Sonic game and actually explored the levels can start to appreciate how the series can shine. There's something extremely satisfying about learning each jump, each spike placement, where the badniks are located, the hidden areas, and then boosting right through the entire thing without any slip-ups. But I also understand that for many reviewers, the effort just isn't worth the time investment because they can churn out the review faster without doing that, talk shit about Sonic, and rake in the millions and billions of dollars that they're making off of these game reviews, right? I'm assuming that they're making millions and billions, right? 
I mean, I hope so. I have the urge to talk more shit about game reviewers, but let's move on to one other thing. Sonic is always trying to evolve, and with every new Sonic game, I always appreciate seeing the new gimmick Sonic Team throws at the wall. Sonic Team is great at throwing shit at a wall and seeing what sticks. Sometimes they'll give you a werehog, but other times they'll give you some colors. One thing they're really bad at though, is making a sequel. And now when I say sequel, I mean an actual direct, simple sequel. Not a spiritual successor, using the same name convention, putting a two at the end. Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Done. That's it. When Sonic Team makes a hit like Sonic Colors, they need to lean into that success a bit more with Sonic Colors 2 before they jettison the formula in favor of Sonic Lost World. Originality isn't a bad thing, but sometimes, man, Sonic Team just needs to make a damn sequel. I mean, imagine how the conversation would change if they released Sonic Mania 2 instead of Sonic Superstars. If this game was Sonic Mania 2, they'd get to talk about upgrades to game mechanics, improvements from Sonic Mania 1, and a lot more introspective style reviewing could be done. Instead, Superstars pretty much starts from scratch again, trying to throw a whole bunch of crazy shit at the walls this time, and you know what? It's definitely not Sonic Mania 2. And side note, it's definitely not easy, that's for damn sure. You know how many times I've died before I beat that stupid final boss? But hey, uh, you know what? Uh, I could be wrong about all of that. And why do I say that? Because look at the negative response to Sonic Forces. You know what Sonic Forces was? As direct a sequel gameplay-wise that we've ever had to Sonic Generations. You got back 2D Sonic, gameplay stayed almost the same, and the gimmick this time was the furry creator for the hardcore fans. Like, what's not to like? Well, a lot of the criticism, or at least one part of the criticism of the game, was that it was too derivative. You know, which floors... Think about uh, Sonic Unleashed, for example. You have... 50% of a good game. Most of the reviewers at the time said that the Sonic Day levels were really great, and the Sonic Nighttime levels, not so much. So in theory, if they were to, I don't know, make a brand new Sonic game, throw away the night levels, and make purely day levels, wouldn't that be a very good game? Why don't we apply that same logic to Sonic Generations? Sonic Generations was already a good game. Both the modern levels and the classic levels were considered good. If you made a sequel to that game, following with the same gameplay, with more refined levels, wouldn't that still be, at the very least, a very good game? That's the way that I see Sonic Forces. And I had a blast with Sonic Forces. I thought it was great. I took the time to S-rank the entire game on Xbox One when it came out. And then, this past year, I came back to the game on PlayStation, replayed the entire thing, and then I got the Platinum. I lived and breathed that game for a solid, I don't even know how many hours. And everything from the soundtrack, to the customization, to the G-rated story that includes Sonic being tortured in prison, was fun. And speaking of the storyline, it was actually better than literally anything you see in a mainline Mario game, you know? So, you know, uh, fight me. The game was fun. I enjoyed it. I have way more to say about the technical aspects of the Sonic game, but I'm not going in depth like that in this video. My intention here is to really paint with a broad brush, talk about the whole franchise, talk about why it's still good, and talk about why it's getting shit on too much, I think. If you take anything away from this video, it's that Sonic and Sonic Team deserve more appreciation for what they've done with the franchise in all this time. And I admit, if you're a Sonic fan, I'm probably just preaching to the choir here. Because you've been shouting from the rooftops that Sonic doesn't suck and nobody listens. Except for, you know, fellow Sonic fans. But to the people who play and hate Sonic games, or haven't played them at all, just remember that it takes time to really appreciate these games. Okay, look at it from this perspective. What's the closest thing to a Sonic game out on the market right now? What kind of game allows you to speed through a level like a Sonic game? Who else uses a similar dash type mechanic? If Sonic Team disappeared tomorrow, what game could come close to mimicking that kind of gameplay? As far as its platforming brothers go, Sonic is so unique. It's not a shooter, it's not FIFA, and it's not even really a platformer in the same way that Mario is. A Sonic game, especially the 3D kind, is its own creature. You need time to learn how to play it before you pass judgment on it. Anyways, I could say more, but suffice to say that I'm really looking forward to the next Sonic game. I still haven't played Sonic Frontiers at the time of this video. 
but that's just because I've been saving it in case the next Sonic game takes like a while to release. I don't know what Sonic Team is going to make next, but I'm sure they're going to throw something at that wall, and I can't wait to see what sticks. Was that corny? Eh, whatever. Oh, and uh, Sonic Racing games are way better than Mario Kart, so fight me. Hey, so just a side note, I know the video is already wrapped up. I just wanted to say one last thing because, you know, this is kind of important for me at least. Uh, I made this video a long time ago. I recorded it and the recordings were just there collecting dust and then I just put it all together. Now, I will point out that in the time since I came back to editing the footage, it was discovered that, hey, Sonic Frontiers 2 is coming out, which is a direct sequel to Sonic Frontiers 1. Which also is the thing I'm complaining about in the video, saying that they don't do enough of, which is a direct sequel. So, I suppose, um, without me actually saying it, they heard my feedback and now they're making the game that I have requested in this video even without knowing that this video existed because it didn't exist until now, but I'm sure that some way they uh, saw the script and then took that feedback as the only feedback and then made Sonic Frontiers 2 or are making it. Who knows if this video will come out in time before Sonic Frontiers 2 comes out, which of course is definitely a thing. I don't know. Who knows for sure, except for Sonic Team and maybe other higher-ups in Sega or something. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, so I'm gonna stop saying things, but remember to, uh, don't, don't do drugs as always, because, you know, why would you, right? Okay. Okay, bye.